All right, so here's a little bit of a pullback of basically everything that we're using for my seventh grader, Lorelei. And so, I mean, I know this looks like a lot for minimalist homeschool, but let me show you and explain everything. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the stuff in the middle. So this is the Good and the Beautiful level four uh, language arts. And this language arts includes writing, art, geography, everything. These are not grade level. Um, I mean, I guess if you have an advanced fourth grader, but um, Lorelai reads at a high school level, but since we came from unschooling, there's things that we haven't really covered in depth or at all. So this is helping her with that. I sound out of breath. Oh, sorry, okay. So this is, so you, what you get with it, you get the Creative Companion and you get the course book. I've done a separate video on this, but here's just an overview in case you're new to um, my channel. There's part one and part two. And there's also geography card things that go with it. And that's used for level four through seven, I think. No, six. You know what? I can't remember. Um, maybe seven. Okay. So I want to show you a little bit of what's in here. Um, I love the companion is my favorite part because it is so colorful and it covers everything. So you don't need separate things. And that's where the minimalism comes in. You don't need separate things for each subject. It covers art composers, everything. Geography. I love this. Look how beautiful this book is. Famous paintings. Isn't this lovely? Compare and contrast. Beautiful. Beautiful. And then I'll show you a little bit of inside the course book. So it kind of goes like this. And in the beginning it has it? Ah. editing symbols. I think this is important for them to learn to edit their own writing. So I love that. And then it has an explanation. And then in the lessons, it'll show you refer back to that page and rule number, whatever, so that they can. Uh, see what they need to fix in the selection that's needed to be edited. So here's an example of how it's set out. It goes through reading and um, let's try to let's start with like lesson two. Okay, so challenging word practice, and she's learned uh, several new words through this. I mean, she reads on a high school level, actually college level, but um, I mean, I still learn new words every day too. And there's a spelling drill here. I like she likes the crosswords. And then it has chapter books that are broken up through the whole thing. So they're reading this lovely, I feel like old timey, but I love them because they're, they're just good, just good literature. So there's, everything is in here. You don't need, you don't need anything separate. You don't need to supplement it, that's for sure. I mean, I don't, I guess coming from unschooling, it's a lot for us, but um, she likes doing these um, spelling ribbons. So you use your spelling words and you make different um, shapes and stuff so that's basically that and it goes through all that you can go to their website I'll link everything below and that you can then you can find, figure out what level your kid is in uh, also the good and the beautiful this is their history and um, this is the history game and I've already done a video on this so I'm not going to show you the whole thing again but basically here's the course book that I use and I use this for all of my children this is um, K through 12 and just real quick it goes through uh, ancient history through modern history every year um, and then each year you would you're building upon what you've learned the year before but you're learning the same so all the time periods every year which is great for people like us who get bored easily and this is part of why we love it so much and and that's right here's the other part of why we love it so much this is the um, the big book of history stories so you don't have to buy anything extra this history comes with everything and um, <clears throat> everything is non-consumable this is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful book. And these are just beautiful stories. Love this, but I'll link to where you can get an in-depth look at um, my video that I already did on this. So that's what we're using for history. Initially, we had gotten uh, Story of the World and this to use for our history, uh, what really happened in medieval times. We're still doing this because we had planned on doing medieval times 
and then we switched to the Good and the Beautiful, which we, there's nothing, I've never had better history, history curriculum ever. I'll never change from that. But um, we love doing these from Terry Johnson, who made, is it, it's one of the maps, I can't want to say map quest, I know that's right, Truth Quest, Truth Quest, Truth Quest Maps. Terry Johnson made it. Oh, that's glaring, sorry. Um, so these are awesome. These are just stories um, about different, I mean, the first one we're doing, it, we're still working on, St. Patrick. And we're just taking our time through it. And so the kids' art notebook pages to this. And we also use art notebooking in here, and I'll link that, how we do that, too. Okay, for science, we do have a good and the beautiful science that we are going to be using because, and it's the meteorology kit. And we're going to be using that because we live in a place where we get um, hurricanes. My kids are really interested to get to that. And there's tornadoes, hurricanes, weather, and I'll show that to you in a different video, but because uh, we haven't started it yet, but we will soon. So right now we're using, and there's a set of three of these, and I'll show you in a second, but this is um, what you aren't being told about astronomy. This is um, creation science, but it's made by a guy who used to be an atheist. And through being a scientist for NASA, he became a creationist. So he uh, is now a Christian. Let me show you. Hold up. So that's DVD number one, and it's called Our Created Solar System. Okay, and it goes through every single myth you've ever heard about, um, you know, evolution theory, and dispels it with science, with fact. And here is, is this number two, I think. Yeah, this is number two. What you aren't being told about astronomy, this is our created stars and galaxies. And then number three is what you're being told about astronomy, our created universe. So these are awesome. I really like watching these. And uh, we use watercolors. And these water-filled brushes are awesome for on-the-go science, which is what we're usually doing. And I already showed a video of all the nature books that we use as resources, but this is basically what we do. Um, paint uh, what we see. And so this is how the day changed and it got stormy. And this is, we went to a sea turtle release where sea turtle, sea turtle volunteers on our island. And so um, that was the large sea turtle that was released. So these are just uh, cheap watercolor or sketchbooks actually. Um, that I linked in the nature studies thing. That's why I'm not taking a lot of time to go over those because that stuff's already been videoed. <laughs> so I do want to show you these. Um, so these are just guides that we use. And you really don't need all of these. Um, I have a problem with books. That's the only part of me that's maybe less minimal than anything else. Um, it's because I love books. But um, so this one is Glow in the Dark Constellations, a field guide for young stargazers. And um, so we're just using these as different resources as we go through astronomy. And I love the H.A. Ray books, both of these, I love these. Um, you don't need both. So I'll show you them so you can choose which one you want. <laughs> these help us make our little drawings that we do. We use um, dark blue, navy blue, um, cardstock paper and pastels to draw the constellations as we learn them. So we love this book. And here's the other. Find the constellations. I think maybe maybe older children for this one, maybe younger children for this one. I don't know. I love them all and I'm super young in my 30s. So yeah, this is written a little more simply maybe, I don't know. There we go. All right, so that's those. Lorelei specifically asked for this. We're not using um, Apologia's curriculum. I, we love the way the new science book was laid out and Laurel, I liked it. So this is just a resource book. We're not going through it, you know, cover to cover. Um, she just really liked it. And since we're doing astronomy, she wanted uh, this book in her, as her, in her arsenal of resources. So, and what we wanted was to make sure that our science books were, uh, you know, Christ-centered, that they were um, creation 
not evolution. Uh, we do teach evolution um, because I don't want my kids to not know what other people believe. I was only taught um, evolution because I went to public school. <laughs> so we weren't taught anything else. Let's set these over here. Okay. For Bible, this is every day no matter whether it's a school day or not. We use these, uh, well, she's using these journables. I might use this too, but I have a different method that I'm using now. But So this is Proverbs, and this is the 1718 series. They're called journables. I will link it. I'm not sure it's all over this. Oh. So basically what you do, I'm going to try to do this without exposing. So this is, you write the Bible verses on this side, and they give you enough lines. They space them out so that all the Bible verses fit in there. And then on the other side, you can write prayers and thoughts based on the Bible verses that you've copied down. And we found that we really like writing scripture out versus doing really anything else. Um, and sometimes they'll give you, I'm trying to see, I need one here, for example. It'll give you kind of a little prompt for what to write on this side. If you want, you can just skip it and write whatever you want. Uh, we like to do prayers, um, kind of like you're writing to God. Um, kind of like a dear diary, but to God. Conversations. And then we just, writing out the scripture, man, there's there's like a lot of power in doing that. Um, if I'm feeling worried or anxious, I have a lot of issues with depression and anxiety in my life. And I, um, it's just best to go to the source. And that's why we have um, Bibles, and here's hers with the tabs. So we just use a Bible, copy the word. Very simple. And you don't have to have one of these. I use a blank notebook and I just, uh, I write the scripture. I write the word. And through writing it, I feel like it's healing. I don't know. I like it. It's helped me. <laughs> and finally, we have math. We have two things we're using for math. We're using Dave Ramsey's Foundations in Personal Finance for Middle School. And this is the Middle School Homeschool, homeschool Edition. So there's a DVD set. Let me open this. Okay, so there's a bunch of DVDs. Or just two, actually, in a teacher's edition. Hmm, I haven't watched a teacher's edition. We've just been going through them. Okay, whatever. But these are these are well well made. This is worth every penny. Um, I got this off of Homeschool Buyers Co-op for like a discount because um, I love the sale. Um, and this is the workbook. And um, my younger daughter is also doing this, and she's doing the middle school, even though she's I got it when she was nine. So it's just a workbook, and it's small. It's like, not, not super big. Um, but yeah, we love this. This is excellent. I want them to have um, a much better handle on finances than I ever did when I was younger. Uh, we weren't taught this stuff, <laughs> so I wish we had been. And then for math, we're using math, you see. Uh, we were using teaching textbooks. We, we were using Waldorf math. We've bounced around all over. I think probably my favorite is probably like CLE. The problem is that like teaching the math three different levels was a little overwhelming for me, uh, especially when we were starting homeschooling. It was just a bit much for me. Um, CLE is a solid math, but so is math you see. We love this. Teaching textbooks is a problem for us, and I would still use that if I had enough com computer space. I just have one laptop, so maybe if we get a desktop, eventually maybe if we wanted to use that, we could. Uh, we do love teaching textbooks. Nothing bad to say about that. Um, I would probably skip the workbook, use graph paper instead of using the workbook, and just buy the discs. So Matthew C, she's doing pre-algebra. She hates math, but she loves this. So enough said there. She, we do have the DVDs and the manipulatives. Um, she uses the DVDs when she needs it, which is not very often. She said she can just kind of figure it out through uh, just opening up the teacher's book, the instruction manual, and just kind of looking it up and figuring it out on her own. So. Uh, it's great for kids who can work independently. And then over here, um, I showed this in another video, but this is our, this is Lorelai's portfolio for all of her. Am I showing this in the video? Yeah. So here's stuff I need to like laminate. We did the Great Pyramid, but we're working on the good and the beautiful. So here's an example of a notebooking page that we did all on our own with just some cardstock paper, like I'd shown in a previous video for our history. They have student sheets uh, as a download. Uh, we don't always use them. Here's an example of a student sheet. So sometimes we do the student sheet, and sometimes we do our own, and sometimes we do both. So here's just an example of some of the stuff that's in here. Even though I kind of already showed this, but if you haven't seen it, they're laminated. Uh, we'll probably just go take these to be spiral bound or 
you could use uh, Waldorf um, main lesson books and not laminate them. We laminate because we use a lot of paints on cheap cardstock paper and it warps. Um, and we use a lot of, we use chalk too. And I don't put them in order except for this St. Patrick story to keep the story going in order. And here's more history right here. Here's some poetry handwriting here. So this is basically what we got. Oh, and we like put little things in here too. This is actual, is this squid, Aubrey? Is that squid ink? I think it is. They did this at EMA, a science class. Yeah. Is that yeah. squid ink? Okay. Yeah, squid ink. Cool. Actual ink. Actual ink from a squid they dissected at um, EMA, which is our local science class. So there's just an idea of sampling of her uh, work there. So that's pretty much it. Um, super minimalist what is, you know, minimal, like I said in another video, minimalism is what you make it. We had way more stuff than this. Um, and honestly, you could get by with a couple, like a math book, a Bible, get some watercolors for paint, and like a nature guide. I would throw in finance because that's super important. And like, so if I had to like minimize this even further, we absolutely could, because we did. It's what we were doing. The only reason we added in the Good and the Beautiful is because it added so many, the kids loved it. And it added so many uh, subjects into, you know, one thing that we, we went for it because it was combined. <laughs> and I like things like that and it helps me out. Um, so I hope that helped. So again, this is grade seven. She's going to eighth grade. She'll probably still be using these resources, except we'll tackle on some more. And I'm gonna show you what she's been reading for fun because we do a lot of reading. As you can tell, books are a thing for us. We do a lot of reading. So I'm gonna show you what she's been reading for leisure. Okay, so as I said, I'm gonna show you some books that Lorelai has been reading for uh, recreation. So she started these a little while ago. These are the um, Christy Miller books and they're pretty thick, but they're like volumes of books. So I think there's seven volumes. It starts with the high school years and it goes into college years and then the married years and the baby years. So uh, these are Christian. If you want your kid, if your kid's looking for like a teenagery, cutesy, beachy, surfing stuff, like, um, but God-centered book, this is a great one. This is a great one for girls that are just really tweens through teens, uh, especially if they're, you know, you know, you want to talk to your kids about dating, this is going to have the good stuff in it that you're going to want to, and it deals with some hard topics too that they may or may not run into, but if they do, then maybe they'll have some reference to it. Um, another series that Lorelai loves, this is the, um, the Keepers of the Lost Cities series. Am I not glaring? There. These, these are pretty thick too. Um, and she read all five of them in, in 10 days. Um, she said they're so good uh, that you can't put them down. And she's actually rereading the whole series. Uh, book six comes out this November and she is like dying to get that book. So she's, she gets really excited when these books come in. If you've seen my little Instagram stories, keep putting this in front of my face, hey, what's up? Um, she gets really excited when the new books come in, but now she's read all of them. So she's just rereading them until the new one comes out. But she's also started reading, um, cause we love the movie, but she wanted to read this. This is the Giver Quartet by Lois Lowry. So this is all of the the Giver books here. I keep looking at the, to see, make sure I'm showing you guys the right thing, so sorry. But, um, so The Giver. And we already know that this is awesome and I love Lois Lowry books. So, uh, we do a lot of classic literature too, so this is what she's reading now for fun. So I hope that helps.